Hello, it's Shane here. I just wanted to do another video uh, to enter into the Navigating the Shift playlist to document some of the things I've been learning and share with you in case maybe it resonates with you or it helps you connect some dots. But these are basically the dots that, that, the dots that have been connected for me in relationship to sort of figuring out this balance between you know, our creative mind and our ego, or our, our, you know, our left and our right brain, our ego and our creative self, and uh, the victim and the adventurer, if you will, um, and really just dealing with fear, right? So fear is a huge one, but I just kind of had an epiphany, right? So fear is created in the left brain because that's the analytical part and when I came across this little nugget of information that made me realize like wow since this information is very left brain just just having the information itself um, is enough that it, it like kind of dissolves the fear away so I definitely wanted to share this because people are so different right like uh, for instance I have a story uh, a few years ago we were going to this water park and the water park had like three different levels on it you could go down a slide at like this level which was kind of like you know slower it wasn't as scary there was another winding one about midway that was a little bit more scary it, it, a few more drops and winds and stuff and then there's the one at the very top and if you live in Tulsa you know what I'm talking about uh, what is it called? I think it's called Safari Joe's or something now, but it was Big Splash at some point. I can't remember what it was called when we went there. But anyway, the very top one, it's like you go right over and it's like straight down. It is, I don't know, probably four stories tall or something. It's pretty far up there. Anyway, to get up to these different slides, there's one set of stairs that like it goes up and up and up and up and up and up and up, you know, and people are lined all around there. It takes forever to get all the way to the top. But along the way, as you get to the lower one, the middle one, there's little places to kind of get off of the stairs and, and go do that particular water slide. And as we were going up it, uh, I won't call anybody out, but two of the people with me did not, they had to turn around. They couldn't do it, right? They, they looked, they were like, no freaking way am I doing this? And they had to turn around and they had to pass all of the people because nobody's going down the stairs. Everybody's just going up the stairs. So the people going down the stairs are the people that like chickened out basically, right? So when I got to the very top, I was up there with uh, my daughter and of course you know we it, this is my second daughter um, she's 26 at the time at, at right now I don't so she was like in her 20s probably but we were about to go down it and I felt what everyone else fears about wanting to turn around feels about wanting to turn around or whatever because it was something new it was something I'd never done before but I in my mind would rather and it's kind of weird to say this but it's like you know you, you set people apart in this way because some people are like no way the, the fear of going down it is the greatest threat but for me the fear of having to take the walk of shame it's like I'd rather just something go wrong and I die going down this water slide than to have to go back down these steps and face all these people as this like grown man being a chicken about going down this water slide right so it doesn't matter how bad it got or anything. It's there was just no way that my biggest fear was being a chicken. You know, you got little kids going down it. You got all sorts of people going down it, right? So even if I had wanted to chicken out, I don't think I could have chickened out because that fear would have been a greater fear. So I hope that makes sense. So a lot of people don't get to that point. You know, like, I don't care how many people I need to face. I am not going down that slide, right? So. It really brought up this idea of it all being left brain because your left brain is designed to protect you, right? We we're always talking about getting the ego out of the picture or whatever, but the ego is super important because it helps protect us, but it, it overdoes it, right? So going in, you could be a little kid about to spend money at a cash 
register, like go buy candy or something for your first time, that's going to be kind of scary. Going, going into your classroom for the first time as a student, that's super scary. But once you've done it a bunch of times, it's like you don't even think about it. So it's only for the fact that it's something new. So that's the point I wanted to bring out in this fear video is that it's a natural response to be fearful about anything that's new because all of your, uh, all of the left brain has to go off of is the past and the memories of this life. And it can analyze a situation and if it doesn't have something to look back on in the history, it's gonna be nervous. It's like, oh, we're in uncharted territory here. You better watch out, you know? And then it starts talking about all the things that go wrong, you know? And it doesn't matter what it is. It'll just start feeding you all of these things, all these ways things can go wrong. But all it has is the limit, limitation of looking to the past. That's exactly why, and that's how it ties into the part about your expectations uh, whether it's a BQH session or whether it's the new earth like the new earth I've got ideas of some of the uh, some of the things we might see on some type of new earth but for the most part my expectations are pretty open because I think it's gonna be something I've never seen before therefore I can't even imagine what it's gonna be like completely I can just think of some things that won't probably be there anymore, right? Or, or whatever. But I'm still limited because all I have is my left brain to analyze this with. And all it has is the history. So as we move into these new energies, there's going to be, there's already been lots of new things happening for me psychically and um, just intuitively and connections with my higher self and, and and that really growing stronger and stronger and noticing the synchronicities and it's happening for a lot of people but I think it's really going to ramp up even more because of so many things kind of culminating with this particular equinox so uh, for you all that don't know we've, we've talked about before how it seems like there's some major shifts that seem to happen near the equinoxes so you know the end of March the end of September in the spring and the fall and that those can actually uh, contribute to growth or something, something with the energies, because that's what I, a lot of people wake up to the Mandela effect or just have an awareness, uh, an epiphany during these times for some reason. But on top of that, we've got new energies coming in uh, that uh, I actually talked a little bit about on the last video, but you know, it's supposed to be, some people are talking about the March 22nd, all the way through March 26th, I think, but like during this time, and this just happens to be right at the equinox too, I think there's gonna be a lot of things um, building up at this point. I don't think it's gonna be this huge event that you can't miss, like I think you need to be tapped in, of course, and um, to, experience, to experience this and to really, um, get all the benefits of these energies um, you know meditating more maybe uh, doing some group meditations uh, things like that but it's like the sunrise you know it's like how many mornings do we not even notice the sunrise and that's a pretty huge event right so it's like you have to be out like looking for it and it's sort of like that I think we're getting this blast of new energies and light coming in and we can benefit from it. But along with that, I think we're gonna have some new experiences and to help control those experiences, just having that knowledge about what I was saying about fear. If something new happens, we immediately get fearful, especially when you get older, right? It's like, uh, I don't know, if you start getting dizzy or something, your first thing is like, is this some kind of health issue? Am I having an aneurysm? Some crazy thing starts running through your head. But it could just be energies too, right? It could just be something natural that's occurring. So uh, I'm just saying that it's, it's easy to freak out about stuff like that uh, whenever it's something new. And of course you want to pay attention if you feel like you need to get medical attention. I'm not saying not to, to do that. But I'm also saying anything new that you're noticing, major synchronicities, major energy shifts, major telepathy or psychic abilities, that seem to be coming online. Don't let them freak you out too much. 
because it's something new it's going to be normal after a while so just to kind of breathe through it and realize like this is just a natural response my body's freaking out because this is something new i'm seeing something i've never seen i'm experiencing something i've never experienced and i'm creating this history that's going to make this less fearful moving forward into the future so it is like overcoming these fears it's like and i'd even like taking down some notes that i wanted to bring up because of um it was just, I had written down some notes about fear, right? And I'm like thumbing through my notepad looking for, because I couldn't remember what it was. It was like, I don't want to forget anything. Because I don't, I kind of do everything and script it, you know? But while I was actually looking for it, I found this. I, I don't even, it sounds familiar. I remember writing it, but I don't, you know what I mean? Anyway, it's, it, it's titled Our Enemy. And this is so perfect. This is way better than whatever I little note I jotted down which I probably didn't forget anyway <laughs> I just don't remember what I jotted down but this is uh, our enemy we're programmed to be on the lookout for our enemy stranger danger to exist in a place of weakness what people pose a threat to us look around what good has this vigilance done the system is designed to host the virus the system is changing our enemy is our obsession with finding an enemy seek and ye shall find remember because haters gonna hate players gonna play which are you the sleep are merely sleeping giants remember our sovereignty we are all divine creator beings game on so that's really cool. I think I actually wrote this back when I discovered the uh, my doodle drawing having the sleeping giant. I think this was my little synchronicity with that now that I think about it. So that was quite a while ago. But it is kind of like that, right? We're always, we're like a taught program to look for some type of enemy. And by doing that, you're immediately kind of putting yourself at the point of an opposition or even a victim right a victim to the system even think about like uh the planet right when you view it as that's why i say it's not helpful to view it as a prison planet because you're turning your world your reality into an enemy think of that for a minute and and i love how universe is you know like doing driving practice with my kids and i'm learning about this fear thing in everything in life, you know, we, uh, some people have sent me the link to Jace, Jason Brashears of Archaics, who has, uh, he's got a lot of videos that uh, really have been intriguing people, a lot of information, new type of information that's been coming through or whatever. And I've watched a few videos and they're um, definitely interesting videos, but that's not really what I wanted to bring apart, bring up. I wanted to really talk about Jason specifically because the reason Jason has all this information is because he was literally in prison, like in a prison. And he was going through the library and reading all these books. So he found his way out of this prison by exploring all of these books and all this information. And he was able to do so much while he was in prison because he didn't have a prisoner mindset. He found his way out. And so I felt like universe was like showing me, even with someone that's actually in prison, look at how much this guy was able to accomplish with, with all this information he collected or whatever. So that was a perfect example right on the hills of me coming across and kind of hearing a story right at the time when my guides are like, look, this is not a prison planet. People need to stop going down that route of thinking that because you create it as soon as you start believing that. Just like Jason, he could have, uh, while he was in prison, he could have felt like, I'm stuck in prison, there's nothing I can do. But he found his way out through the literature he was uh, reading. So anyway, I thought that was a pretty good example of just how whether you're in prison or not is irrelevant. It's having that prisoner mentality because then you're in that victim mentality. And when you're in the victim mentality, you're looking to be victimized. You're expecting an enemy somewhere to take advantage of you and 
you don't want to face your fears because facing your fears means you're probably going to get attacked, right? But even with me facing my fears, I had probably the scariest feelings I have because I got all the normal stuff that we're fearful of, you know, losing family members or having to face my addictions, if you will, <laughs> you know, the, the regular life things. You now, even sugar, I was like realizing recently, I'm like, man, I think I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty addicted to sugar, you know, without even realizing it. Yeah. But anyway, we do, we have our little addictions that can be the things that we're most fearful of facing. But for me, I had that instance in, uh, I want to say 2017 or 2018 when I was about to fall asleep. And I had this hypnagogic image of being buried alive in a sarcophagus in Egypt and the terror I felt with it and I you know it woke me right up but it was like I was in this buried alive in this box basically but with it I had the whole memory for a moment of where I was uh, it just wasn't a dream you know it was like with that fear I got the memory of how I was in there. I don't remember my whole life or anything, but I definitely knew I was in Egypt and I had been buried alive. And it was, it was terrifying. So I've been really revisiting that, trying to figure out what that was all about. If it was some kind of plan to encode some kind of message for a future me by going through this horrific ordeal, or if it was some kind of karmic balance at the end of that life I, I don't really know you know but I do know that I've had to face that and those feelings with that and and apply forgiveness back to those heart virtues we talked about I've got to bring them up because when you apply these to really any situation it just changes your life and that comes from the wing makers material but it's appreciation compassion forgiveness humility I like to say the next one's inner standing or understanding and um, and then the final one is valor which is like bravery and then when you can go through those heart virtues and apply it to anything you're dealing with like that fear I had to apply forgiveness to whoever you know buried me alive back in that lifetime and and I could when I would go to that place and try to revisit those feelings after that um, moment of remembering and I've done it here recently where I try to go in meditation and visit, revisit that life and it's 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 terrifying because really my only point of remembrance is the most scariest of the part right and when I go there it's hard to be there for very long and I can f feel this oh utter rage at being like tricked into however I got in there uh, and even at that time struggling with it while being in the box in my final moments and not having that, uh, I just, I don't know. I'd say it's even hard for me to talk about it now because it was such a, a strange thing to remember that and to have to face those fears after so many lifetimes of something that happened so long ago. But I have looked into that more and I've applied forgiveness to it so try the heart virtues they have been so incredible for me in my life in every situation anytime I'm really getting into uh, and I guess that's sort of an analytical way of uh, you know a left brain way of handling the things that the left brain goes on and on and on about kind of like saying that you know this is just something new and to get over your fear by realizing like look it's only fearful because it's new first time you drive a car or work a job or even go in to get your driver's license and think about it everything's scary your first time you know everything first time getting on a plane think of how frightening it is with everything and some people are just braver than others some people uh, are it's easy to look at other people and say well you know people fly every day and you, you can you can work through a lot of things with the left brain but just starting with that basic concept that it's only because it's new that I'm feel, feeling fearful, a lot of the fear can just dissolve like immediately. And that can be super powerful.
So hopefully this is helpful for some of you guys out there to think about this because I think we're going to be going coming into a lot of new things and I'm, I'm really excited about it but I do know that as soon as it happens I'm going to have that fear like is this is this really okay you know and uh, to just kind of get kind of to that point like hey at least something's happening we're going to we're it, it's happening right we're going to do this it's finally happening I don't know what it's going to look like exactly I'm not sure exactly how it's going to unfold but we're getting some movement, right? So even at the end of the day, you can say that. <laughs> so lots of love, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. Oh, I wanted to remind you, you only have a couple days left to register for uh, the Gentle Rain Yoga class. It's going to be free. It's coming up this weekend. You don't want to miss that opportunity. Another opportunity for you to get beyond your fear if you're fearful of trying something new and expectations, right? We have expectations about how we might have, say, some intentions answered. So maybe you put out intentions to be more healthy, or maybe you put out intentions to meet other people and to try new things, or any of these. This could be like how it's presenting itself to you, trying out this yoga class, and you can do it for free. Register, I've got a link down in the description below, so you can check out that video or just go register. But we're all out of time, it's, it's like coming up. So you wanna do that right away. Lots of love, light, and unity. See you on the next one, peace.